In the few lessons previous to this, we've done a lot of talking about how to organize information to have it make sense so that you can get, get out of the information what you really need. For the last couple of lessons in this section, what we're going to be talking about is identifying ways to collect that information so that you have something to organize <laughs> and so that the information you have to organize is valid. So this first uh, topic here, the topic we're dealing with right now is sampling methods, different ways to collect that information or different things to consider when you're collecting information. And I want to talk a little bit about the terminology that's involved with sampling methods. So some of the terms that uh, that you're going to run across include representative sample, which a representative sample means that you have um, values that mean something to your particular interest. So values that have value, <laughs> values that have meaning to what you're actually studying. And what I mean by that is, um, for instance, suppose you were looking for uh, how many uh, video game players like using PlayStation 3? So you were going to do a study of PS3s versus Xboxes. Now, if you were going to go out and try and find people to ask about this, and you asked, um, you went into an old folks home and your uh, uh, you know, assisted living center, and you asked only people who were old, older than 70 years old the information that you got from your survey may or may not be representative of what you're really looking for. The the values or the responses that you get in a survey about PS3 versus Xbox in an assisted living center are probably going to be at best limited. Um, and you might not get any at all. And certainly the ones that you got probably wouldn't have a whole lot of um, correlation to the people that you're really curious about playing the PS3 or the Xbox chances are if you wanted to get more valid information you might want to ask a group of students in a high school or a middle school or maybe just randomly ask people in the mall and that leads us to our next section here a random sampling once you've figured out the kind of information you want to get from your representative sample then you need to figure out how to actually choose among the people that you know you're finding the area for a random sampling suggests that you just randomly choose people or better, you don't choose at all. You just you know roll a die or something. But you somehow you randomly pick the the sources of information so that hopefully what you get isn't all biased. Um, for instance, uh, again with our question about PS3 versus Xbox, suppose you decided that going into a high school was was the right idea. So you head into a high school and you walk into a room and you see everybody playing on console games. So you start running around and asking them. And it isn't until you leave and you start to compile your information that you discover that the room that you went into was specifically a group of students who were doing a durability study on PS3. <laughs> so all the students that were in there were playing PS3s, and that's why suddenly you were looking at information that suggested that 95% of your sample liked PS3 instead of Xbox. So a random sampling can have issues can have problems, um, but hopefully when you're randomly picking people, you don't run into a situation like that where everybody has the same topic. A random sampling is supposed to be just walking around a high school or walking around a mall and getting a completely uh, unbiased chosen or unbiased group of people. Now a stratified sampling would take care of the problem that we originally ran into, and that was maybe the age issue. A stratified sampling chooses a specific number from each area of whatever your values are, a specific number from different groups of people or different groups of values. And so in this case, maybe uh, maybe you discovered that more girls like PS3 and more boys like Xbox. And since you want an overall picture, you want to make sure you choose half female and half male so that your stratified sampling shows a fair example of the female point of view and the male point of view on your overall picture. So a stratified sampling specifically chooses people, whereas a random sampling just makes use of whoever shows up trying to avoid bias. And bias is our last topic here. Bias means that uh, somehow your information was slanted toward one topic or another. Your slanted information might be that maybe the guy that you hired to go out and help you ask questions loved PS3. So all the people he was asking, he said something like, so you're one of the cool guys who thinks PS3 is better than Xbox, right? And when he asked the question that way, obviously more people liked PS3 than Xbox because everybody wants to be you know, part of the in crowd. So bias can be very hard to avoid, and there's a number of ways to work on it. But 
avoiding bias is really sort of the primary issue when you're looking for sampling methods. That's why we choose stratified or random sam samples to try and get a good representative and unbiased sample to collect information.